Good morning. Um, we're going to go ahead and call the Injury Prevention Committee uh, to order. Um, looks like that uh, we're going to have the same uh, issue as the Pediatric Committee did. I, I'm not sure. I'd heard from a few people um, earlier that they couldn't be here. Um, so I'm not sure how much the weather and, and everything is affecting that. But Courtney, if you wouldn't mind calling roll. Shelley Steven Stidham. Uh, here, sorry. Present. That's okay. <laughs> Susan Birchfield. Marianne Contreras. Here. Wayne Dennis. Here. Courtney Edwards, present. Linda Galvon. Deb Nichols. Jennifer Northway. Wayne Perez. Kara Tapley. Stuart Williams. Okay. Um, no quorum. No quorum. So uh, we have uh, mostly um, uh, uh, just information and updates from committee meetings. We did have uh, some uh, discussion items. Obviously, we'll not be able to uh, vote on anything, so we can't vote uh, on <coughs> minute approval. But uh, minutes from the August meeting are sitting in front of uh, all of the um, uh, committee members up here. Uh, I do want to mention that we had um, several uh, openings for um, new committee members uh, this year, uh, uh, four actually, and uh, two uh, committee members uh, have been reappointed, uh, Wayne Dennis and uh, Susan Birchfield, so we're glad to have uh, both of them back. Um, we, uh, uh, Jennifer Northway and Ram Perez are um, both uh, going off the committee. Um, I was just uh, notified that um, Ram was taken to the hospital, had planned to be here today, but was taken to the hospital uh, last night. Uh, he is doing okay. He wanted to uh, let us know that he had planned to be here, but he couldn't today. So I have given his uh, certificate of appreciation um, to uh, the RAC chair, um, but I just wanted to uh, say that um, we appreciate Ram's service. Ram's been on the committee, I think, uh, almost as long, or probably longer than I have, which is uh, over four years. Uh, and same for Jennifer Northway, who couldn't be here today, but I also have her certificate, so uh, Dishes will make sure that um, that is mailed uh, to Jen. Uh, I know that Jen uh, served on the committee uh, well over 10 years and uh, was on the committee when, um, uh, when I was uh, selected to be on it too. So I want to um, just acknowledge publicly um, both Ram and, and Jen's uh, service to the committee and how grateful we are for that. Um, so uh, we'll move on to the next item on the agenda, uh, Trauma Registry Work Group. Courtney? Oh, sorry, before I, I mention that, we do have two new members uh, who will be joining uh, the committee. Uh, Jessica LaPlante and Thelma Scott will both be joining uh, in uh, 2014 and will serve uh, uh, three-year terms. So we're very excited to have uh, them joining the committee. So the Trauma Registry Solutions Work Group met in August, August 22nd. At that meeting, it was a face-to-face -face meeting. The topics of discussion were, we discussed some of the reports that um, different areas are wanting from the registry. We also discussed, um, the, the trauma registry is kind of currently built up where silos, um, you have the hospital silo, you have the EMS silo, you have the crash report silo. And there is lots of discussion and it's now being moved as long as the stakeholders approve of it into a less siloed effect so that I can get the EMS data, EMS can get the outcomes data, we can get crash data where it's more open and it's along a patient um, continuum there. And so there are discussions and they're working through that, um, each being able to select which data elements are gonna be fully open. So that we can, you know, EMS is asking for outcome data from EMS, we're asking a lot about their um, care record, their PCR in that aspect, but there's lots of discussion about that. There is also discussion and we created a draft document about each RAC is going to have an EMS champion and a trauma uh, hospital-based registry champion that will really be fully integrated and very knowledgeable about the state system that can be your local resource, kind of modeling off of the RACD project. Um, and there were discussions in a draft document that was created about what we expect from each of these individuals and in, in their requirements to move forward in that champion role and also what we would like to see from them as you know their role in the RAC area. And so that was discussed. We will be meeting again tomorrow face-to-face. -to -face. There is a face-to-face -face meeting tomorrow afternoon. So. 
Thanks, Courtney. Do we need, um, are, uh, are there any discussion points that our committee needs to take or any recommendations we need to make at this time? Not at this time. All of the reports that we put forward that was passed to us are good and ready okay. to go. Okay, thank you. Um, I am going to uh, skip over the GTAC uh, committee uh, liaison reports since we um, uh, don't have um, many of our uh, members here. Um, also, uh, I had asked uh, Tammy Sajak to, um, it, if she would be able to talk about the Texas uh, Injury Indicators Report, uh, and she had said um, she would if it, if it was available, um, and, and obviously Tammy's not here, so I'm, uh, I, I'm assuming that that's not available at this time, so we'll try and get uh, that on uh, the next, uh, the February uh, agenda. Uh, Texas, uh, along with all the other 49 states, um, are asked to submit a uh, uh, data report to uh, the CDC Injury Center. Um, and uh, this is regardless of whether or not you have any type of uh, CDC funding. Um, which Texas does not at this point. Um, but each state is asked to uh, put together an indicators uh, report, and I thought it would be nice uh, for us to have a presentation um, in the future about uh, some of the data that um, Tammy in, in uh, her area is collecting. So we'll, we'll add that to um, uh, the February agenda. Stewart is not here today uh, to talk about the Safe States Alliance hospital-based special interest group. I think we may have mentioned this at the uh, August meeting. Um, the Safe States Alliance is, uh, it, you probably heard me mention it in the past, is a professional organization for people who work in the injury and violence prevention uh, field. It is um, uh, a, a worthwhile uh, organization and cost about, uh, I think, $75 uh, for an individual membership. Um, I, I would encourage um, you to become members of Safe States. It's a great way to find information about uh, best practices, uh, cutting edge information um, regarding injury and violence prevention um, activities. Um, but one of the things that Safe States has is they have uh, several uh, special interest groups. And one that just got formed is a hospital-based uh, special interest group. And um, the idea behind this is that Safe States has a lot of uh, new members who are coming from hospital uh, backgrounds. So uh, Stuart is chairing that uh, uh, special interest group. And we've had one meeting uh, or one conference call so far, or uh, have another conference call coming up in December. But one of the things that that group is talking about trying to do is come up with some uh, recommendations, uh, suggestions for um, uh, hospital-based uh, injury programs. Uh, Safe States uh, has a, a work group that has done this for um, state health department-based uh, injury programs. Uh, and so we, uh, they thought it might be a good idea to engage hospital-based folks in coming up with some suggestions for hospital-based uh, injury programs. Um, and I had uh, uh, talked to um, uh, DISHES and uh, uh, the GTAC Council about the possibility of, of uh, Texas uh, coming up with a work group to make suggestions to the Safe States uh, work group. And instead of just our committee uh, coming up with these uh, suggestions or recommendations, I thought it would be good to work with um, TTAF, uh, TTCF, uh, and others uh, and possibly form a, a Texas uh, work group. Um, I know that uh, Marianne and Courtney both uh, represent uh, or attend TTCF and, and uh, TTAF meetings. And um, so I'd like to get uh, your input. And I wanna make this clear too, that th these would not be rules that we would submit. Uh, these would literally be suggestions, recommendations. So no hospital-based injury program would be required um, uh, to adhere to these. Um, so uh, Courtney, um, Marianne, I, um, what, what are your thoughts on trying to get a work group together with TTAF and, and TTCF and, and others? I think, I think that's a, a great idea. I think it's a coming together of minds from different organizations and instead of being, as Courtney said earlier, with other things siloed, I think bringing us all together will bring a, a strong, strong group for the state of Texas. Safe states, like Shelley said, is, is an awesome. Um, organization to belong to, especially for new people, and they, um, a lot of the 
the things that they look at are research and data-based, and, and I think it would be a great um, show for our state to do that. Courtney, do you have any comments? Um, I know one of the struggles that we see in the level three and level four um, trauma facilities, <clears throat> and even in the level ones and twos at times, is a lack of administrative support. And I think if we can get some of the bigger organizations around the state, the leading organizations, and say, this is a recommendation that we're making on behalf of GTAC, I think that will give the level three, the level four coordinator um, some power when they go back to their administrators and they go back to their managers and say, these are what people are saying that we need to do. And so it might give them a little, a little more fight in the, in the race for money and support from their administrator. So I think it's absolutely something that we should look forward and move. Okay, thank you. Wayne, do you have any comments or suggestions? Okay. Um, and I see, um, actually, I, I mentioned TTAF and, and TTCF, but also um, I, I see Leanne, who's with uh, IRAC in the audience. I, I think that this would be something that we should invite um, the RECs to, uh, as, or RAC uh, representation as well. Um, I, I think it's important to get, um, because I, I actually work in an injury prevention center, so I'm not in a, I'm at a hospital, but not in the uh, the, the trauma center, so I don't ha know the issues that, that uh, Courtney and Marianne um, face, and I certainly don't know the issues from the level threes and fours, and so I think, um, as, as Courtney and, and Marianne uh, mentioned, it's, it's important to get feedback and input from them um, as well. So uh, does anyone in the audience have uh, any comments about this or? And, and if you've never um, looked up TTAF, I mean, excuse me, looked up Safe States um, on the web. It, they also, you can sign up for webinars, which they give a great education and they don't cost anything. So that's a benefit um, as well for different programs, for ways to analyze your work, uh, your evaluations, ways to capture your data. Um, it's, it's an excellent group. Okay, thank you. Um, well, we will move forward in reaching out then to uh, TTAF's, uh, T uh, TTCF and, and the RACs, um, uh, possibly uh, while we're here, um, so that we can try and get some meetings scheduled. Um, I think it'd be nice to have a face-to-face -face meeting uh, the first time, and then maybe yes. we can do um, future meetings via uh, a conference call. So um, we'll report uh, back on that um, at the February meeting. Um, typically, our committee schedules workday meetings, uh, and it's usually held the month prior to um, uh, the quarterly GTAC meetings. I, I know there's, we can't vote on it, but do we, the three of you who are here, do you want to go ahead and, and try and schedule uh, workday yes. meetings just in case yes. we need yes. them? And Okay. Do you have, do we have suggestions? I, the uh, February uh, GTAC meeting is uh, February uh, 12th through the 14th, I believe. So do we want to look at um, uh, the month prior, like 30 days prior to that, which would be uh, probably January 8th, 9th, uh, 10th? And typically we have our meetings on a Friday. Does that still work with, yes. with you all? Yes. Courtney? Yes. January 10th is TTCF strategic planning meeting, so that would not be a okay. option. Um, uh, we've got the 17th. I think that's probably the Friday right before a holiday. I don't know if that would have any impact on those of us who work at hospitals don't get the holiday off. But. Yeah, that's <laughs> with me, 17th. Wayne, so, uh, January 17th look okay to you? Okay, we put that down, Marianne. And then um, we'll look at, um, I don't know when um, uh, the holiday break. is yeah. uh, in April, but uh, April uh, 11th or 18th. Does anybody have a calendar to know when Easter in, is or April Passover? 10th is when ENA is having their injury prevention conference okay. in which we are helping support them. Okay. So are you suggesting maybe April 18th? Yeah, yes. Okay. Got Wayne, it. does that look okay for you? Okay. Okay. And if I forget, make an announcement about that. Okay. Uh, 
Um, okay, so July 18th. That look okay? Yeah, looks great. And uh, October seventeenth. Sounds so far away. Yeah, okay. That's good. You got those dates, yep. Marianne? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, any announcements from the committee? So just an update, um, one of the things that we made is kind of our goal for 2013 was to increase our collaboration with some of the other organizations. Um, we have partnered up um, offering expertise with ENA. ENA is offering a statewide injury prevention conference. It's April 10th. It's going to be held in Austin um, in conjunction with their quarterly state meetings. It's on that Thursday. It will be a half-day conference, and I believe their uh, fee is going to be $25 or $35, so very, very minimal. Um, the opening presentation is going to be offered by Stuart Williams, and it's just a foundation and overview of what injury prevention is and how we can abide by um, evidence-informed decisions when we are looking at evidence you know, at um, creating those injury prevention programs. There's going to be examples that, so that will be the morning, the opening, and then the rest of the lectures will be people who have implemented programs and talking about their program, how they implemented it, how they're evaluating it, what's their barriers. And I know that one of the presentations that we've brought to you over the past, the steady program offered by the CDC in reducing falls, is going to be one of the topics at that. Um, conference and is going to be supported and presented by one of the GTEC members as well. So you all, there's more information I'm sure coming out on um, Texas's, Texas State ENA's website and that's txena.org regarding that conference. Location? Austin. Austin. Uh, I believe it's at Dell's Children's. Um, Dell's is doing the CEs for it. Okay. 10th. Any other announcements from the committee? Any announcements from the audience? Any general public comment? Okay, we may have, we may beat the um, education committee and pediatric committee's record, but uh, this meeting is now adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>